Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, this should be up uh, as soon as I can get it up. Um, I tried streaming this, so if you guys looked on the channel and you saw a stream, that's why. But for some reason my connection is not working very well. Um, so that's something, I guess. But um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about my personal wish list for Call of Duty Zombies moving forward. If it's a solo project or if it's something else. Um, you know, that's basically what I'm kind of trying to do here. Um, so the main thing I want to talk about first to kind of, I guess, start with, um, is to kind of let you guys know what this is going to be like. Um, I'm going to be going through basically, you know, if there's certain guns I'd like to see return, if there's certain guns I really am tired of seeing, um, things like that, um, certain systems, certain features, um, certain gameplay elements, things like that. Um, I have only... I do not own Vanguard, so I can't really talk much about anything introduced in that. Um, all I know is I really don't like the idea of getting your perks free each match and then just upgrading them each match. That's kind of just... repetitive. Um, and I kind of like the idea more of how Cold War did it, where, say, you know, you start out you know your perks are a little weaker but then you spend more time and more time and more time and they end up being stronger because you can add things to them um, but in terms of the guns I will just go through quickly because um, I don't want this to be too long of a video um, I really like the commando slash XM4 type idea but I'm kind of tired of having M4 and Commando and like those like M16 type weapons all the time. Like I, as much as like the M16 itself is iconic, like the XM4 slash Commando is just kind of there. So it's like I personally wouldn't really care if that's not there. The AK, I am glad we finally can use it in zombies, at least Treyarch zombies, because we haven't been able to since Mob of the Dead, if I remember correctly. Um... So it's 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 nice to be able to actually use the weapons. Um, the AK obviously iconic as well. And my thing with the AK is I would prefer to either have the AK-47, the AK-74U, or the RPD. Um, I don't think we need all three of them. Um, personally, um, you know, a justification could be made for the AK-47 or 74U one of those and the RPD because they are slightly different but I don't need a game where we have those three guns and a Dragunov where we have four AK variants um, just because that's not very or like you have an AK-47 and then an AN-94 an AK-47 and an AKM which are very similar but they have their differences um, I don't think those are necessary um, the Krig which I can't remember if it's based off anything so I know when the game first came out, some people were saying that it could have been a Galil-type weapon, but then they added the Galil, so... I don't know. Uh, the QBZ is fine. It reminds me a lot of the Type 95 from Modern Warfare 3, um, with that top carry handle kind of look. Um, I mean, that's probably what it is based off of, or what the Type 95 is based off of. The FAMAS is nice, but, I mean, it's just... It's okay, in my opinion. It's not... And I, again, this is for someone who doesn't play multiplayer. Um, and I obviously don't really use AR as much in Zombies, but it's just... I don't know, like the firing sounds getting more realistic is fine, but it's just kind of made the FAMAS fall into territory of just kind of being a gun. To where it's like, oh, there's the top handle, but there's the top handle on the QBZ, there's the top handle on the Grotza, there's the top handle on the EM2 to an extent. And... You know, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but... Yeah, that's basically my point. The Garza, I think, is interesting in the fact that... And th and this is my thing, I will say. I like these types of guns where we don't see them as much. Like, you don't really see a Garza all that often. Um, it's been in Battlefield here and there, but you've never really seen it in COD. Um, the Farah, which I can't remember what that's supposed to be in real life. Um, I don't remember... But, you know, that's even kind of an interesting looking gun with the way the barrel is. The CM8, I, I mean, the wood stock and the wood kind of 
grains and things are kind of basic with a lot of guns, but it's it's nice. It almost looks like a G3, which now that the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm actually thinking it is a G3, but I don't know. But the EM2 I really like because it's an experimental weapon that, if I remember correctly, was never actually really used in, like, war <laughs> or anything like that, so it's just kind of like this experimental gun that people were like, yeah, we'll try this out, and then it just never went anywhere. Uh, the G-Rav, obviously, the Galil. Iconic. Same thing with the Commando. Same thing with the AK. Uh, the Vargo, I don't have yet, um, but I'm pretty sure that's just the Volk Stormgewehr. Or Stormgewehr, but... Yeah. MP5. Kind of weird, because I personally like the MP5K more for zombies with the higher fire rate. Um, I think the kind of slightly slower fire rate doesn't really scream MP5 to me, and also the base design of this one is just kind of weird. Um, like, it doesn't really scream MP5 to me until you modify it, like, here. Like, you can make it look like a, uh, MP5. I don't have most of the barrels on it, but, um, where's the one? So even this one is a bit more iconic. Um, but, like, there's no integral suppressor barrel uh, for the SD, which I guess, you know, and I will admit that could have been before, you know, the 80s, whatever. But in the 80s, we also didn't have these. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't really matter about the whole 80s aspect when they're already throwing shit in there. And also the fact that, what is it? The, the this round? Or no, where was it? The thing I find funny is this and this are supposed to hold the same amount of ammunition. And I just, I don't get it, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't get how this holds the same amount of ammo as a drum mag when the drum mag is... But that's a side rant, that's not really important. But in terms of the SMGs, the MP5, I can, honestly, we could throw that out, I wouldn't really care. The Milano, which I think is like the Uzi, if I remember correctly. Um, let me double check that, yeah. I mean, that's cool. You know, it's cool and all, but again, eh. AK-74U, again, if we have this, take away the AK-47, we don't need both. Um, but I would personally like to see the AK-47 a bit more, just because we've seen the AK-74U for years in Zombies, and I'm kind of tired of it. Uh, the KSP, not a fan of... I mean, the damage in multiplayer is probably decent, or Warzone, or whatever, but I don't play Warzone. But my thing is, burst weapons and zombies either need to be super strong, have a unique ability when you pack-a-punch it, or have some kind of feature with it when it's pack-a-punched where it gives you different ammo or things like that, which World War II zombies did very well, and Black Ops 1 did very well. But now, since you can customize all the attachments, they're not going to throw on... Because then if someone has a build where they say, oh yeah, well I'm going to have this high recoil weapon and I'm going to throw a foregrip on it, they can't then throw a grenade launcher onto the SMG and then use that. Um, which I think is one of the drawbacks of the gunsmith system is the fact that, for zombies at least, the guns just all feel very similar. Um, and I was going for Dark Matter in this game. I got Diamond on the specials, the melee, shotguns, and pistols. So I got pretty much all like the secondaries taken care of. But I didn't get the launchers, I didn't get the snipers, LMGs, tech rifles, SMGs, ARs, because I just realized I'm like, I can't I can't go through and use, you know, twenty different fully automatic guns and then just I I I'd, I'd, I'd lose my mind. You know, it's just too repetitive, it's too it's too much of, oh, full out of this, full out of that. There's no uniqueness, because at least with the pistols, you have a 1911, which is iconic. You have the Magnum, which is just a powerhouse. The Diamati, which is nice in between. The Amp 63, which is just fire rate out the ass. And then there's the Marshalls, which I don't think the... M no, I did not get the Marshalls. Um, I did the Amp, the Diamati, and the... 1911. Um, but even the Magnum 
was okay, but it, my biggest problem with the Magnum was the damage just sucked. Even if you upgraded it, the thing was just not good. Um, and at least with the 1911 dual wield, it still was pretty decent. Uh, the Diamante dual wield was pretty good. The Amp 63 dual wield is amazing, but the Magnums, you don't want to dual wield because they get more damage based off headshots, which the headshots in this game are blocked anyway because most of the zombies have armor and it's just a whole mess, but we'll touch on that later. Um, either in this video or another one. Um, but in terms of the KSP, I could leave it. Uh, the Bullfrog slash Bison. I do like this gun for the simple fact that you get a fuck ton of ammo right away for it. Um, I think that's the most interesting thing about it to me is the Helical Mag. Um, and it's just interesting. But, I mean, I could, I mean, I'd like to see it, honestly. Um, but, you know, Mac 10 I could go without because it's... It's okay, but if we're doing a standalone game, and unless it's like, oh, you get every gun from, you know, the Modern Warfare franchise, Advanced Warfare franchise, Black Ops franchise, you know, all that. Unless you're getting, like, unless it's a COD Mobile situation where they throw in guns from each franchise into the zombies. I, you know, and I'm kind of focusing on it mainly as if it's Treyarch's next, next entry. The LC-10 I do not have any real time with. Um, I've messed around with it a little bit in multiplayer, in private matches, but I just, I don't really care. Um, it's okay, but I mean, if I'm going to do something like this, I'd rather have the FMG9s for Modern Warfare 3, but again, this is just focusing on Black Ops entries, so. The LC-10 is okay and all, but the fact that you can't dual wield it, and that's one thing that Black Ops 4 did well, was it gave you the whole operator mod thing where you can have unique versions of guns. Because if you could have operator mods for the LC-10 where you dual wield it, that would be freaking amazing. Or dual wield the Mac 10 or you dual wield Scorpions, or you dual wield Tech 9s You know, that'd be pretty nice. You know, but that's not an option, because you're not allowed to dual wield, because dual wield is limited to pistols. Which is a whole nother conversation, but yeah. PPSH, I think, honestly, this might be a controversial opinion, but I could go without it in the next game, um, just because the PPSH is nice, and yes, it's iconic and everything, and oh my god, he's going to say the PPSH is... It's a great gun. It's good all around, it's pretty good in general, but it's just... I don't know, I'm so used to seeing it that I'm just kind of like over it. So, I don't know. I, if it's there, I wouldn't complain about it, but I'm also not going to say I wish it was there. Uh, the OTS or the Scorpion, I mean, it could really go away. I wouldn't really care. Because, um, I mean, I don't have it. But it's also not even just because, oh, I don't have it. It's just because it's a Scorpion. Or not the Scorpion. It's the... Uh... Fuck, what is this? I remember what this is from. This is from Black Ops 1. I don't remember what it's called, but this gun is just okay. You know, it's fine. Or the Caparis, I think, is what it was called. Uh, the Tech 9, I think, is a very interesting choice. Um, and I know I say I don't really like bursts, but I like the idea of single shot burst or full auto when you get to choose. I think that is a lot more interesting than just, hey, it's a burst, deal with it. Um, so I think that's pretty cool, and also the fact that, and that's a problem with the Tech 9, is it's a semi-auto machine gun by default, so it's more like a machine pistol, but you're not allowed to dual wield it because it can go full auto. And they didn't want to put that in the pistol category, and yeah. Uh, the Lapa, eh, I mean I haven't really gotten much playtime with it, but it's, it's okay. Um, you know, they could take it out and I wouldn't really care. Uh, the UGR, I, I have no idea about this gun. I haven't seen any gameplay of it. I don't know what it is, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, the Type 63 slash SKS, um, I wouldn't really want back. Um, and this is also part of the reason I'm going to say a lot of this is because I don't really want another 80s era zombies game. <laughs> I'm tired of all the old shit like I'm you know people are always like oh well, we're tired of the modern warfare we're tired of 
advanced warfare, all that stuff. And at least with the future movement, you could have more fun with the weapons. And even in Black Ops 2, and especially in the campaign, there were a lot more unique weapons that they left out of multiplayer because of the whole balance or anything like that, which is, I mean, that was their choice. But I would like to see something maybe around 20, around present day, um, maybe around Black Ops 2, maybe a couple years after that, just because you could have that without the advanced movement and you can still have interesting weaponry instead of just World War II weapons that are still around during the Cold War. Because I think there's a lot more fun to be had throwing in prototype weapons or throwing in, oh yeah, what could weaponry look like in 20 years? That's a lot more interesting than, oh hey yeah, everyone's seen an M16, you know, everyone's seen an M14, 90% of people have seen an AUG, you know, that to me is a lot more interesting than, oh yeah, yeah, another M14 or oh, another M16 variant. I just don't really care. Um, again, if it's there, if it's some, not futuristic in the sense of laser guns, but if it's some futuristic mode of the M16 where, you know, there's some kind of unique aspect to it, that's great. But, you know, until then, I kind of just am bored of it. The AUG, I like, and I love the kind of waffled mag, but as iconic as it is, it's just not special enough for me to really say, oh yeah, we got a back. M14, same thing. Do something different with it. You can do so much with an M14 to turn it into a different gun. You have the M21 EBR. Um, I remember there was another one, but I can't remember. But there's things you can do with an M14 that you can't really do with other guns to where you can kind of fuck with it a little bit, make it something different, and make it more unique. So I think that would be a good option, but Again, it's probably going to be there just because the M14 is so iconic to zombies. The Carve or the... I'm trying to remember what it was called. The G11, I think, is what this is supposed to be, even though if you look at it in the Gunsmith, it doesn't have the iconic sight from Black Ops 1. Um, like That's just not an option. You have the generic-ass scopes. Um, and I think what they could have done with that is they could have turned the Hollow Scout or the Multi Zoom into that scope from Black Ops One. Like um, in Modern Warfare Two, you can have uh, with the I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it was the F two thousand, and then the Tar. Uh, with those two, if you put a red dot sight or a holographic on it. Um, I think one of them was a red dot, one of them was a holographic. Um, it would give you a unique sight that wasn't just the normal red dot, which is like the sight that's supposed to go on the gun. So I thought that was a lot more interesting than just uniform attachments. And that's one thing that I also don't like about Gunsmith is that, aside from like the AUG, every single gun has the exact same sights. The XM4 has the same sights as the AK, even though, and I will go over this because I'm just stupid about it. This red dot should only be on the AK. The AK is not supposed to have the mill stop because the red dot that they would use would be the Cobra. And that's the one that would fit the gun. But they don't do that and that's just kind of what it is. Um, or even the Diamondback, you know. But if I remember correctly on the XM4... You can also throw on the Cobra, even though it just makes no sense to be there. But, you know, I, I like the idea of having similar stat attachments, but giving them a different aesthetic look on different guns. Just because then you feel like you at least are playing with something different instead of the same shit over and over again, especially when you're leveling up guns. Um, so the LMGs now, I would love to see the stoner back just because we've barely really seen it in Call of Duty. We saw it in Black Ops 1 in more of an assault rifle form than an LMG form. And that's what the plan I have about Black Ops 1 is that the LMGs kind of sucked in terms of being LMGs. The M60 is an exception, but the RPK just kind of felt like a slightly bigger AR. Um, same thing with the Stoner. And the HK-21 just felt straight up like an AR with the handling of an LMG. It was just not good. 
Um, so I would love to see the stoner back personally, just because I feel like it's a pretty, it's a pretty great starting LMG, because it's not too strong, but it's not too weak, and the handling is just about right for an LMG. The RPD, again, if we see it back, I'd rather see this and the AK-74U than the AK-47 and the RPD, um, although I would take just the AK-47 without the other two, but that's not really up to me. Um, RPD, again, I don't... I think it's because I don't really think of it as a Black Ops franchise gun. I mainly think of it for the Modern Warfare franchise, so it's kind of weird for it to be here. Um, it's not weird timeline-wise, it's just weird thinking about it. So I'd personally be fine without it, but that's just me. The M60 I do think is really nice in Zombies. Um, so I personally would like it there as more of like the heavy fire alternative to the Stoner, where the Stoner's more... All around, the M60 is just straight up a powerhouse, but it takes forever to fucking reload, and the handling sucks. So it's one of those things of where you're trading mobility for power, and then the stoner, you trade a little bit of both, and you're kind of balanced. The MG82, I don't really care for. I've barely used it, but, you know, they could take it out, and I wouldn't really complain. Uh, the Pellington slash R700, if I remember correctly. Might be, or is that the M40? It's one of the two. It's either the R700 or the M40, but I can't really tell. Um, I could go without it, just because, again, same issue with the Modern Warfare comparison with the RPD. I don't picture this as a Black Ops gun. So having it in... if it Again, if it's one of those games where it's supposed to be guns from all franchises, fine. But if we're doing Treyarch, I want to see Treyarch guns and guns that Treyarch haven't used before, or that other devs haven't used before. Um, and I know they haven't really used the R700 before or the M40, but if it's a Treyarch game, I want to see either guns that, like one or two guns in each class that are iconic to Black Ops, and then, you know, newer guns they haven't really used before in terms of, oh, well, COD hasn't touched these, so we'll use those. Like the ZRG. I never even heard about this thing until this game came out, until it came to this game, so... I personally would prefer stuff like this than a Barrett or a R700. And like the L96, that's fine. Again, iconic of the franchise, cool. But the Barrett and the Pellington could have been literally any other semi. You could have put a Dragunov here, or you could have put literally any other bolt action here, and it would have been fine. There would have been no difference. Um, the ZRG, I would like to see return in some form just because I think the idea of like the PTRS type weapon, which is basically what this is, is really cool. Just a freaking tank sized rifle that could just fuck you up in one shot. I think that's awesome. Um, the Car 98 I think is what this is supposed to be, even though it looks kind of weird. Um, I would love to see this come back, but I don't really know if it will depending on the era, so... Pistols, the 1911 is going to come back no matter what, just because it's part of the franchise, so I get that. Uh, the Magnum, I would love to see the Python or the Cobra return, where it's an actual powerhouse of a weapon. Where, yes, headshots are like one shot till a certain round. But I would love to see body shots be pretty useful too, especially if they're going to keep the armor on the zombies. Um, the Diamati, you can take it out. I don't really care. It's basically a Rafika, if I remember correctly, so I don't really have any strong opinions on it, even with my time on it. The PM63, I like it. I like, if you can dual wield it, that'd be great. But I don't really think it'd be a great idea to just bring it back to say, oh, it's been in Black Ops. Now the Marshals, I do really like. I like the idea of a unique pistol for the people that want to stick to pistols starting out. I like the idea of a shotgun pistol. Um, or say a sniper rifle pistol or a machine pistol in the case of the PM63. You know, something where it's a good hybrid, but the marshals just aren't as great as I would like them to be. The Hauer is pretty good. I mean, it's your pump shotgun, generic, whatever. It's fine. Um, the Spaz is always going to be here, um, I feel like, personally, just because it's modern and... It's linked with the Black Ops games, so it's kind of just a Call of Duty gun that most people know. Um, the Street Sweeper slash Striker, again, it just feels kind of weird having it here with the fact that it's known from the Modern Warfare games. 
It's kind of like how in, um, well, it's even worse in the case of Vanguard, but it's weird in Vanguard seeing the EM-1 in a World War II game, and especially when it's just, it's the same devs, so it's not the same situation completely, but it's just a weird situation. It's like, your brain just feels like this ain't right. And not in like a, oh, cool, you know, whatever, multiverse bullshit. Just, oh, man, like, it just makes you feel weird. Now, the 410 Ironhide. The 410 Ironhide, I would love to come back, but I would rather have it as a, like, tactical rifle, marksman rifle, kind of like it was in Modern Warfare. Because um, if I remember correctly, this is modeled after the Mark II carbine that was in Modern Warfare 2019, so I could be wrong, but, you know, the Sigma, take it away. I don't, I mean, I think the idea of running in with, like, an RPG and zombies as a starter is kind of funny, but I mean, eh. Um, in terms of melee, it doesn't really matter. Throw a knife in there, throw, you know, I don't like the idea of a sledgehammer in zombies, I think that's kind of dumb. Um... Like the idea of like a machete or a bat or I forgot I had the sigh, honestly. Completely forgot about that. Um or something like a scythe, which is fucking sick by the way. Um <laughs> <coughs> This thing was cool as shit. Not gonna lie, but it's just it's okay. Um but in terms of the specials the thumper I think is kind of a cool idea um the shadow hunter i like but i wish you could have the bolts on it like i wish you could have the actual explosive bolts kind of like in modern warfare 2019 where you can have the explosive bolts you have like thermite bolts stuff like that like different bolts i feel like would make that amazing um and really good for like challenge runs the ballistic knife is probably going to be there just because it's so iconic the nail gun it's not going to come back Let's just, let's be honest. Um, it's just a complete joke weapon. Like no one's gonna look at this thing and be like, "Yeah, I want to use that going high rounds." Even though it's pretty good, it's just not really needed. Um, but after that, we're gonna talk about these skills. Um, so basically, I do think that this system is a great idea. Um, I don't like the idea. Excuse me. I don't like the idea that some of these get like with ARs you get three additional attachment slots snipers, LMGs, tack rifles but for pistols you don't um, I think the armor penetration bonus damage is needed but I think if they stopped putting fucking heavily armored zombies like the light armor zombies are fine but the heavy armor zombies need to go away I think if they listen and they get rid of those in the next game if they just let it get to the point where either tier 3 or 4 you know, switch the close quarters bonus damage or the long shot damage. Switch that to putting it as tier... So tier 3 is the extra close-up damage or long-range damage, depending on the weapon. And where you want people to play with them. Switch that to tier 3 and tier 4 have it be the extra 3 slots. Or 2 slots or whatever. I think that would be a lot more interesting. Because then with the fact that it's higher tier currency, people will be more picky and choosy until they play more. Because um, obviously once you've played enough, as I have, you get everything maxed out everywhere, except the guns. Um, you know, so that's a thing. Uh, the field upgrades, I like most of these. Frost Blast, I think, is nice for bosses, but I think in general, having it just basically nuke zombies there near you is kind of frustrating. Um, Energy Mine, get rid of it. I've seen no one use it. I just upgraded it because I had the crystals. Aether Shroud, keep this. I don't think it should be a maximum charge to 2. I think at tier 5 or whatever the highest is. Throw that upgrade. Have that upgrade be if you revive a teammate while down, it restarts your timer. Because then it encourages us more. And I know Healing Aura already does that. But I think if you can have this, and even for solo play if you are using this, have it say, oh, if you, for every headshot you get, you get X percentage of your time back up to a certain cap. So if you're in there for five seconds and you get each headshot you get gives you about half a second back. So if you're spamming headshots, 
you know you're good for a train and then you can get out of there be safe and then you're good um maybe that's not going to be a very liked idea but i you know i think it might be decent healing aura i don't really have any complaints about um i do like the idea of it reviving your allies and that they get to keep their perks um i don't think it should just be oh on their decay meter they get to keep all those i do think that if if someone on your team is already running this from the start of the match, not from, oh, they switched mid-match, but if they're running it from the start of the match, I think you should be able to keep all your perks, as long as they've invested the time. Because um, that's, and it's not even a thing of, oh, well, then it's hard to get your pack perks back. It's really not. But it's just, eh. Ring of Fire, you guys can keep in, because I know the, you know, players that like to kind of hold out in one position. And I will admit, I used this a lot for trying to get diamond and things like that so I will admit Ring of Fire is amazing keep that Frenzied Guard is really good for co-op I've just never personally used it so I don't really see the use in it I mean it's nice having your armor repair 100% and then the kills you get during it repair armor but it's just eh the upgrade where it makes all enemies run to like switch from running to slow just walking that is amazing. That part is needed, and I'm not going to lie. But in terms of the rest of it, it's just okay. Toxic Growth, again, is something for the people that like camping with like Ring of Fire. And I will say, I think Ring of Fire, Energy Mine, and Toxic Growth, or Ring of Fire, Toxic Growth, and like Tesla Storm are probably the best for camping. Um, or maybe Healing Aura, and Frenzied Guard, or not Frenzied Guard, uh, Ring of Fire and Toxic Growth, but eh. I mean, I, I really don't want to see this one back personally, just because it's not really that useful. Um, Tesla Storm, I think, is a really nice idea. Um, I just think the execution kind of sucks. But, you know, solo, it's nice kind of stunning enemies for a second. And it's nice that you can't just stand there and kill enemies with the electricity and just be immune. Um, I do think it would be a cool idea to have it, if you activate it, it especially when it's fully upgraded, you activate Tesla Storm and it destroys incoming projectiles, especially if they bring Manglers back. Because, and then every time it does, it kind of takes a certain percentage of time off. So you're basically trading off more time with it versus less time with it, but it gets rid of projectiles. So I think that's kind of interesting. Upgrading perks should be in the game, and I will say now, I think all of these perks should stay in the game. Jug obviously needs to be there. Um... And increasing the armor, if they keep armor around, is a great idea. Um, also, the max upgrade of instead of getting downed, your armor is depleted and your health is reduced to one, you get that extra like split second. Kind of like Last Wish, I think. Or Dying Wish. Um, too much Destiny. But Dying Wish from Black Ops 4, I think that's a good idea. Uh, Speed Cola, no real complaints. Um, the mystery, And I will say, the mystery box settling down faster so you can actually use it quicker on Fire Sale is so great. Like, that was such a nice thing to have for the perk that I like that. Um, I do think that the reload speed bonus um, by 30%, um, I do think that should be tier 2. Field upgrades charging should be tier 3. Um, tier 4 and 5, I think, are perfect um, where they are. But, I mean, yeah, speed cola before you get all the upgrades kind of just there um, if you combine it with fast max it's really good but quick revive I mean no real complaints um, I think it's pretty great and I think all the implementation will never really have to change um, I do kind of hate that you had to get it to tier 5 to use the solo aspect of it I think that's kind of dumb but you know if you threw that at tier 3 and then did, oh, tier 4, reviving an ally will also heal you to full health. And then, or say tier 4 is revive, save the same thing, switch 3 and 5, that'd be great. Perfect. Stamina up, no complaints. Um, I think it's perfect. Um, I do think tier 2 and 3 could be switched, just to kind of make it a bit more interesting. Because um, you can even put tier 2 as like the tier 4 perk. So, and make it kind of like a more high tier thing. Um, Elemental Pop, 
it's fine. I mean, if you're going for high rounds, you're probably going to throw it on just because of the help it gives. But, I mean, my thing is I like being able to choose which ammo mods I have, so kind of... And I can do that, but there's a time if you have Cryo Freeze or if you have Deadwire, or not Deadwire, but whatever it's called. If you have that, you know, you'll have the chance of those activating or Shatter Blast activates or something like that. So... You know, no real complaints about the upgrade tiers either for Elemental Pop. Deadshot Daiquiri, I think, is perfect. Um, I do think tier... What is it? I do think tier 2 and 4 should switch. I think the critical bonus damage should be there. Um, so I think you should switch tier... So put increased damage against armor at tier 4. Reduced hip fire spread at tier 2, and then have tier 3 be the increased critical damage. And then tier 5 is fine where it is. Um, Tombstone, again, you only are going to use it in co-op. I do wish they kind of gave it some kind of use within solo to where if you went down and you got back up, your first perk you bought was free. Just saying, I think that would be a really good idea. Um, cause then if you lose four perks, you at least get one back for free, depending on the round, especially in solo. But I get that, especially with that perk, Treyarch really doesn't give a fuck about solo players, so it is what it is. Mule Kick, honestly, no complaints. Um, I, I, I just honestly think it's perfect. Um, and honestly, all the tiers, I think, are pretty perfect where they are. Um... I mean, if anything, maybe switch tier 2 and 3 around, but, I mean, other than that, it's pretty good. Death Perception, I really didn't care about in Black Ops 4, and I thought in here it would just suck. But then I used it, and I was like, oh my god. Especially with the tier 4 and 5 update, the 20% 20 more looted salvage and high-grade salvage was nice, whatever. Uh, the Danger Indicator is nice. I didn't really pay attention to the mini map, up, mini map update. Seeing enemies outlines like actually there behind walls, especially for bosses, has saved me so many times. Um, seeing chest resources and item drops through walls, I mean, that's like the main part of it is seeing shit through walls, but I think that's amazing. Um, I don't know if that should be the tier five, but I mean, I don't really know what else you could do with it. PhD slider, as much as I would prefer to have flopper, I do think if we're keeping sliding in the game, which is very satisfying you should just keep it um i do think that if you could switch tier one switch basically move tier two three four up one so four goes to three three goes to two etc make the explosion from jumping high up make that tier five keep that at tier five but have tier 4 instead of immunity to environmental damage while sliding. Make it so that you're immune to fire regardless. No fire damage, no gas damage. Because having to always slide through the gas or through fire is just kind of frustrating. And it's like, if you don't have... You know, if you're not really paying that much attention and you're sliding all around... Because this perk is mainly for rushing and running around and stuff... So if you're doing that, you need to be able to know that you're not going to take two, three hit, two, three tiny little things of damage and then get fucked up because the fire hurts you because you weren't sliding yet. And also the... How do I explain this? The actual timer that it has before it counts you as, oh, well, yeah, so you started sliding now, but we're going to register you as sliding this much time later has gotten me hurt so many times because I'll slide and initiate it and then it won't count and it'll say oh well you didn't you didn't start sliding yet right and then I die and then I'm like well I slid through that so I shouldn't take damage but I still am but whatever um napalm burst or blast furnace I think it was called in black ops 3 keep that um I think that's kind of an interesting idea again no real complaints about the upgrades um, I do like the idea that it's, oh, special enemies can be hurt by this, you know. I think that's a good idea. Keep that there. Deadwire, I think, is nice. I'm not sure how good it is now, because I know it used to be really good in Black Ops 3. It still is. I know it used to be amazing in this, but then they nerfed it. 
which I will never really get the idea of nerfing PvE content because it's not like Destiny where and even there it's stupid but it's not like Destiny where if you nerf a gun it nerfs it in PvP and PvE so it's like an issue of oh well this gun's really good in PvE and we want it viable there but it's wrecking people in Crucible so what do we do they Call of Duty doesn't have that problem with these types of things with like the wonder weapons or with perks and zombies because you use completely different perks between the modes and with the ammo mods and like the what the fuck were they called again the field upgrades you don't have those issues so why you need to nerf them I don't get I mean if there's an issue where say shatter blast was one shotting the final boss of an easter egg solo that's a problem I get that nerf it against that boss which I'm pretty sure they consider that a different enemy type so you can go in and fix that you know I know it's not as simple as I'm making it seem but you get my point but with like brain rot it's not like there's a glitch with brain rot or turned where oh well I turned a boss to my side so now it's killing everyone else and then it dies like it's not like you're two shotting a boss with brain rot having it kill the enemies around you and then it kills itself for you like it's not that big of a deal and turned has always been good personally like because the slow effect really helps because I mainly play solo. Um, honestly, all of these ammo mods are pretty great um, in different situations. But that's my big complaint with, excuse me, with Elemental Pop. If you get Shatter Blast and you're trying to kill like two zombies, it wastes that upgraded version of Shatter Blast, which is, let me see how long the cooldown is. A 30 second cooldown. Which is only an extra 5 seconds, but that's 30 seconds of a big-ass explosion that you can't use. And yes, if it's at the end of the round, it's not the biggest deal. But especially with the randomness of it, and especially in the middle of a round, if you're trying to kill a zombie in front of you, and it does the Shatter Blast, it's just frustrating. Um, and I get it, it's like, oh, you could just not use the perks, but, I mean, dude, really? <laughs> if you're going for high rounds, you're not going to be using certain perks over other ones. Like, you might not pick up Tombstone if you're playing solo, but... I mean, you know. Um, now, in terms of maps, I would like to see none of these maps personally return in the next game. Again, if it's a game where it's like all the zombie maps, and they do a COD Mobile thing where it's like, oh, all the zombie maps and all the guns from all these other games are in here now, you can use them all, etc. That's fine. But none of these are really good enough to me to where they deserve to be brought back. Like, D-Machina, eh. It's fine. Uh, Firebase Z is fine. Um, it's my most played, but that's just because it's very basic. Um, Mowager Toten is fine. And Forsaken, I just personally don't really like. And it's not even because, oh, it's hard. I like how Forsaken starts. I just don't like the rest of the map. Um, I do think Outbreak deserves to come back, personally. Um, I think Onslaught is a very smart idea to have multiplayer maps because then people can come in and learn multiplayer maps while playing zombies if they don't like multiplayer then you can learn okay I can learn these multiplayer maps and then they can if they decide to go into multiplayer because oh well I want to unlock this gun but it's easier to unlock in multiplayer because it's get a hundred kills with assault rifles over different matches versus oh or say with like the OTS where it's kill disciples right after they teleport with SMGs within a certain like I just don't care <laughs> you know so it's like you know if people want to do that I think having Onslaught as an option is a very smart idea and I also think on top of that having uh, where is it containment where it's the smaller maps and it's just the whole like 1v1, 3v3 maps, the whole thing is open to you, I think that's great. I think that is a very smart choice, personally. Um, but, yeah, um, in terms of other features, I think the idea of triple pack is a nice idea. Uh, weapon rarities, I think, should stay in the game, um, just because I think it, I like it's 
The downsides of the rarity system are not enough to outweigh the positives of being able to bring in whatever weapon you want into starting a match. Because um, even if you go in with an LMG or a shotgun or whatever with like a damage loadout on it, that's not going to matter. You know, within 10 rounds, your red weapon's going to suck ass unless you do something with it. Um, and I really do like that idea, but um, yeah. I mean, that's basically about it for me. Um, I do think the armor system for the players should stay there as it is in Cold War. Um, I don't think heavy armor zombies should come back at all. I just don't. If you want to bring manglers back, have them be the heavies. But do not bring the heavy zombies back, because then you have to deal with verrict sprinters, normal zombies sprinting. You have to deal with normal like light armor zombies heavy armor zombies and especially on fucking mauer it's terrible because on mauer you got sprinters you got light armor you got heavy armor you got manglers you got panzers you have disciples you have if i remember correctly you also have the mimics um but I think that's part of the easter egg but it's just and especially on forsaken it's just too fucking much you have almost everything coming at you, and it's just... It's a shit show. It just feels like Infinite Warfare's last map, and I have never played that. I played it... Or, no, I have. I played it once, got to about round 20, 30, and I stopped, because I just didn't care. I was just like, I am not having a fun time. I'm done. I'm bored. I do not want to playing this shit. So I stopped. But that's basically me. Um... And again, Dead Ops Arcade, I personally really don't care if it comes back or not. Um, if you guys want to do Dead Ops Arcade 4, go for it. I'm sure there's plenty of people that like it, but it's just not for me, personally. Um, but that'll be me. Um, I hope you guys have a nice day. Um, hopefully this video gets uploaded and processed fairly quickly. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get more videos out soon, and hopefully I'll be able to stream. Um, if not when this video does go out. Um, it might not be there right away, but I will try and get a link to my Twitch in the description down there um, at some point today. Um, obviously, if you're watching this after the upload date, that's different. Um, but I'm going to try and get that there just because I can stream on Twitch a lot easier than I can on YouTube. So if that's something you guys want to look to to support, I'll leave that there. Um, and I will update my channels about section at some point to include my twitch there um so yeah um i will see you guys in the next video or stream hopefully um and yeah i hope you guys have an amazing day and i will see you guys next time